how is x86 use it segmentation? So in particular, what we've got are four segments. The code segment, the stack segment, we have the data segment, and we have an extra segment. And each of these in, contains an offset into a descriptor table. Okay, there are other things in here like a, a privilege level that I'm not going to really get into. Um, and there is also a bit which says whether it's a local or global table. And then we have a descriptor table. And so a descriptor table consists of bounds or limit, offset, read, write, and present. So the read, write, and present tell us whether, for instance, a um, particular segment is writable. So for code segments, you'd often not make those writable. Right? You don't want to have self-modifying code. Okay. Zero is unused. And so we have some number beyond that. So let's look at a particular piece of code. Right, so let's say, well, let's say we've got the following setup, right? We've got a code segment that um, goes from zero to 40. We've got a stack that goes from zero to 35. We've got data that goes from 0 to 12, okay, where our data might be our globals. And then here, let's say we might have a heap that goes from 0 to 32. And this could use the extra segment. Okay. And here's going to be our code. So at address 4, we have, we want to move indirect into EAX and then at 06 we want to push EAX and then 08 we're going to add uh, 2 to the ESP. So let's look at what would happen. So if we could get the EBX value and then we indirect it, that is going to, because of that indirection, use the data segment. So it's going to go to the data segment. That is, it's going to go to the data segment register. It's going to find the index in here it's going to go to that index and look and see, is EBX between, in this case, 0 and 12? And then if so, then it'll add the appropriate offset in order to get to the location of the data in memory. Segments take us from a logical address to a linear address. We're going to see in x86 that there's another mapping that can happen after this due to paging. And actually, I skipped a step here, and that is that first we had to fetch this instruction before we could execute it, right? Before we could decode and execute it. So we looked at OX04. OX04, when we are using the EIP 
is 0x04. So in order to find out actually what linear address to use for this, first we're going to use the code segment register. That's going to tell us what descriptor to use because we'll get an offset in there. That'll then tell us what bounds to use for bounds checking to make sure we're not beyond 40. And then we'll go ahead and add in the offset. We're doing uh, uh, execution, right? Reading, so this will be, this uh, actually execute is a slightly different bit than, than read and write. We'll ignore that for a moment. We can imagine a read, write, execute bit there. And so then that will allow us to get the instruction. We're decoding the instruction, we're executing the instruction. Now we'll get the EBX. When we dereference the EBX, we have a logical address. We need to convert that to a linear address. Again, now going through, in this case, the data segment, we'll do bound checking, we'll then add the offset, that, and we'll then get our linear address. That will go out, assuming you don't have any paging set up, to memory. So the linear address will be the actual physical address. We'll go get that value, put it in EAX. Now we fetch another instruction. Same deal happens with the 6. We're going to take the OX06. We're going to apply the code segment. The code segment is going to go to its particular offset, right? which could be the same or could be different. Uh, uh, and so then that of other segments. But in a case, we'll go to the code segment. We'll do the bounds checking. We'll add the offset. We will get the appropriate linear address. We'll go to memory. We'll get the instruction. Now we push EAX. Because it's a push instruction and it deals with the stack pointer, this is going to use the stack segment register. So the stack segment register will go to its appropriate descriptor in the descriptor table, do its bounds checking, take the offset, and then that will affect the stack pointer. Okay, And then this will do the same way. So the fetching the instruction will use the code segment. In this case, adding to ESP, does this require us to do anything with the stack segment? And the answer is no, because we're just changing ESP. So ESP is going to be this number, presumably between 0 and 35.